Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective. And today, I have a box. And this is a Think Center. So we're going to be talking about mini PCs again. Now, this is going to end up being the M70Q, once we take it out of the box. And this is actually a unit that was sold, uh, but still has like several years of warranty left, which is pretty cool. Now, the M70 itself is a one liter mini PC, and it has a myriad of different accessories and options that we will dive into, but the most notable part is probably all the different stands. You can get monitors that this literally like slides into the back of. It's a pretty cool little setup. Along with the mini PC in the kit, you do get a few other accessories as standard. So let's get those out. We have ourselves a keyboard and then a box of things. Now inside the box of things, we have a mouse and then a power supply. And then we have a Wi-Fi antenna and a setup guide. And the setup guide is pretty straightforward as you would expect from a Think device. And it tells you all the different ports, the buttons, how to plug it in, all that good stuff. I doubt we'll need it, but we'll keep it there just in case. And then of course we have a pretty standard Lenovo style full-size keyboard that actually has some very quiet keys. So not surprising, designed for an office space. But before we take a look at all the accessories, let's take a close look at this. So the Think Center itself is a one liter PC and it is very much enterprise level. So these start even used at around the $550, $600 mark and they go up from there depending on the specs that have been crammed into this little thing. And even though it's one liter, they don't compromise on durability, quality, or any of those other things. You are looking at a Intel 10th generation CPU list, and there are a lot of them. Uh, Celerons, Pentiums, i3, i5, i7s, i9s even. And depending on which one of those you get, you're running Intel UHD 610 or 630 graphics. Now the specs on this one are an Intel Celeron G5905T, which is the second from the bottom. So not super fast. 8 gigabytes of RAM DDR4-3200 is in this, 64 gigabytes maximum possible. Windows 10 Pro comes with the standard, 256 gigabyte SSD NVMe is in, on the inside, but there is space for two drives, a 2.5 inch and an M.2, we'll see that when we get in there. And we have four wireless options available, this one has the Wi-Fi 6 AX201 with Bluetooth 5.0. We also have a 1.5 watt single speaker on the inside. So let's talk about ports. On the front, we do have your standard headphone microphone combo jack, a USB-A 3.2 Gen 1, and then a USB-C 3.2 Gen 2, and then the power button. On the left and right hand sides, we don't really have much of anything at all, and the business is all back here. You can see that these punch outs are not being used. We have a Kensington lock slot up here. Your power supply plugs in here. Display port, USB-A 3.2 Gen 1, HDMI, three additional USB ports, and I'm pretty sure those are all also 3.2 Gen 1. One is a super speed, one is a 10 gigabit, and then the other actually has like a remote start feature, if I understand the manual correctly. We also have an ethernet cable, and then of course our Wi-Fi antenna. So with the specs out of the way, at least for this model, let's go ahead and get in the inside. And we see a single screw back here, which is either a Phillips or a flathead. So really doesn't matter what's available, you're probably going to be able to open this up. And then of course, if the Kensington lock slot is in use, then this gets very difficult. So we'll just spin that out like so. And then the whole case slides forward. But let's turn that around so you can get a better look at what we've got going on here. So this is the SATA Caddy. 
And underneath here, we do have the Wi-Fi card hanging out. If we go ahead and uh, squeeze these two tabs and gently pull up, and we'll move this over, we can see a CMOS battery. We've got some spring-loaded screws there, and we're going to need the whole disassembly tray, I think, to go a little bit further. All right, and we've got a socketed CPU. That is awesome to see in a one liter machine like this. So we move that arm out of the way, our cage lifts up, and then we can grab our CPU on the sides and pull that out. This bottom panel just slides uh, right out of place, uh, which makes this a lot easier to get into. So. The bottom plate is like so. You push it out and off it comes. So here are all the other guts. We've got two DIMM slots and this slot has eight gigabytes of RAM. You could swap those out for 32 and 32. And here is our SSD or M.2 variety. Now it's interesting to note that this guy seems to have another slot beside it that has no solder points. So Perhaps, theoretically, you could get two of these plus uh, this caddy as well. So that's pretty cool. Not much else to, to say other than the fact that this is crazy upgradable. This is really easy to take apart. Um, and it's, this isn't surprising. This is exactly what I would expect from a top-tier, large PC manufacturer like Lenovo um, putting their efforts into R&D producing a one liter PC that has so much upgradability and expandability um, and it's easily serviced even for a small PC. Like other than a dedicated GPU, there's really nothing that this has that a desktop doesn't. So because of that, I think it actually does a good job of even warranting kind of the higher prices that these can demand. But let's go ahead and put it back together and see what else we can learn. All right, now that we have this back together, let's go ahead and plug all the accessories in and hook it up to the monitor that I have just over here, and we'll see what performance is like. All right, we've got everything set up. I also have my sound meter here because these one liter boxes can sometimes make an awful lot of noise. So it's measuring 50 at the back. Now keep in mind, this is a Celeron. Keyboard is probably a little spongier than I would like personally. Uh, I can still type on it really great though. Like it is definitely your standard tactile feeling membrane. Um, the shine on the top of the keys isn't super great. Um, the mouse is like feather light. Yeah, and you'll either love or hate that. Clicks are good. Mouse wheel is okay. And the only reason I even mention these is because they are bundled with it. Um, but I would imagine, unless you are a business client, you'd be like, yeah, I'm going to find something a little nicer. Um, but seriously, though, this is uh, a really slick piece of kit. But I just can't get over how quiet this thing is. Like, it is just so quiet. And uh, that can be a challenge for some of these uh, one liter units, but you have like the biggest PC manufacturer in the world building it, it better not suck. And it looks like they uh, delivered on that. So yeah, like this to me is so much more than just using, like if you use this as a media center, you would be underutilizing the, the awesome power of this sucker. Um, I really think that this is... Uh, not only good for business clients, but if even if you're like a small business and you just need like a desktop computer, there's no reason for you to get like a big tower when you have one of these and it's got, you know, an M.2 NVMe slot. It's got a two and a half inch base, so storage isn't going to be the issue. 
Um, you've got a socketed CPU, which can accept all kinds of different uh, 10th Intel generation CPUs, which is great. And it's one liter. And the cooling solution is exceptionally robust. You have a big aluminum block. You've got that fan here that's pushing the air across the cooler. Like it's, it's just really cool. And I believe these are actually your air intake vents along the top. So if you want one of these, I'll leave a couple links in the description down below where you can find them used on eBay, or if you want the Gen 2 version of this, uh, some links that'll take you directly to Lenovo to purchase one of these things. To be perfectly clear, Lenovo did not provide this to me. Uh, this is something that just showed up on my desk, and I am uh, giving you my thoughts on it as objective as I always would, regardless of who provides it. At any rate, if you enjoy taking a look at these mini PCs, then I would strongly recommend that you do do the Big Four so you don't miss the next iteration of this series. So please like the video, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so the next time I have an opportunity to feature one of these mini PCs, you will be the first to know about it. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.